Hi. I haven't seen you in a long time. I have my friend with me, Mr. Manny. He's going to be helping me with a story for today. And we really haven't seen you, but you've seen Pastor Manny, and you've seen some of his great friends, and you spoke with uh, Rachel, and today is my turn, so I'm glad to see you again. Hi. Okay, well, let's just review a little bit of what uh, Pastor Manny was teaching about. He was teaching to you about Joseph and how God prepares Joseph. God is preparing Joseph for something very, very special. And so before we get started, maybe you can ask your parents to grab their Bibles and you can grab your Bible. Because I know some of you have your own Bibles and we're gonna be reading from Genesis, okay? Well, let's just review what you learned last time. We learned that Joseph was special. He was chosen of God. But his father, his father really, really, really loved him. Loved him so much that he made a special coat for him. A, a coat with many, many colors. Pretty. Not everybody could get a coat like that. Isn't it pretty? I don't know. Oh, you're not jealous, are you? No. Oh, okay. Because his brothers were very, got very jealous. They were not happy at all. So in my picture book, you're going to see how his brothers reacted. I don't think they were happy. Do you? Do you? They don't look happy. Mm, they don't look happy to me either. They were grumbling. Well, part of the story that he told you about, his brothers just got even angry when God gave Joseph special dreams. He had two special dreams. And so his brothers were very jealous. And, and they were jealous because they felt that, who does this guy think he is? And so they were mad, but they stayed away from him. But that was okay that they stayed away. At least they weren't gonna be too mean. Well, we're gonna start our story today and it's found in Genesis. Okay, turn to Genesis. Did you turn to Genesis? Yep, got it. Chapter three. Chapter 37. Chapter 37, he's right, see? Chapter 37, I'm glad I have my helper. Verse 12 to 20. And Brother Manny is going to read chapter okay. 37, verses 12 to 20. So let's see if you remember everything he reads. And here we are. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. I, I don't do well with these Hebrew names. And Israel, the father, said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent them off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? And he replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Mm. Here comes that dreamer, they said to the, each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Oh my, isn't that terrible? <gasps> How, nice guys. Oh, how angry they must have been. They really, really were not happy. Mm. And so they plotted to kill him. Well, I don't think that they were too kind. And, you know, one of the script in the scriptures, God told them that you shall not kill. That's right. But they plotted to kill their own brother. That was awful. And then... They were going to throw him in the cistern. You know what a cistern is? A cistern is a big well, okay, where water accumulates. You see the well? 
But this well was empty. It was empty, but it was deep. And so they said, let's throw them in the cistern. Let's throw them in the well and let's get rid of them. And then let's lie. Let's tell our father a lie. We'll say that he was eaten up by a ferocious animal. Do you think that was good? Not nice. That's not, not nice. nice at all. I think that God is not pleased with that. I don't think so either. But you know what? God's going to let that happen, I think. I think. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. Go to Genesis 37, verses 21 and 22, and see okay. what happens. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. Okay, at least there was one brother that was trying to be somewhat nice. Well, we all know that Reuben was the oldest brother. Mm. And the oldest brother was supposed to take care of the others, protect them from harm. And so when he knew that they were going to kill him, he says, no, 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 let's not do this. Let's just throw him in there and keep him because he thought, I'll keep him out of danger. Maybe, maybe I'll come back and get him. Let's see what happened next, verses 23 to 28. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianites, so when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? And that's 29. Okay. So Joseph, they saw a whole group of people. They said, oh, let's get rid of Joseph. This is our time. And let's make some money while we're at it. So instead of killing him, they took Joseph and they sold him as a slave. To the Ishmaelites. To the Ishmael. Do you know what a slave is? A slave? Yeah. Yeah, somebody who is, uh, doesn't have his freedom, and he works day and night for someone else and never gets paid. And never gets paid. And, and he gets treated bad, too. And he's owned by somebody. He's owned by someone else, yeah. That ain't no good. No. Mm -hmm. And he can't, he doesn't have any freedom or any time for himself. He's got to do what he's told. So Joseph was sold as a slave, even though his brothers treated him cruelly. Mm-hmm. They at least didn't kill him, but they sold him as a slave. How sad is that? That's bad. I think that was an evil action on their part. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Reuben wasn't there. Do you think Reuben would have stopped them? He might have tried. Yeah, he might have tried, but he wasn't there, so they got a chance to get rid of him. And then they, their cruel action, they was, it was terrible. Uh, but God used that action, that cruelty that they had for him, and he worked it for good. That's right. He did, he did, uh, God did a wonderful job, a wonderful thing in the life of Joseph. But he had to go through a lot first. And I mean, just imagine, your brothers are selling you, your brothers. So when Reuben came back, he was so upset. Yep. He tore his clothes because, mm -hmm. oh, he didn't know what to do. What am I going to do? What am I going to tell my father? Mm -hmm. What or oh, what am I going to tell my father? And so 
verses 29 to 36, if you want to read them for us. Okay, 29. When Reuben returned to the sister, and we read it a moment ago, and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe. They slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it is, whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning will I go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. 36. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Midianites said, Joseph, I'm sorry, the Midianites sold Joseph to Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Okay, so we find that the brothers needed to make up some kind of a story to lie, which is another terrible sin. Mm -hmm. And so they decided they would kill a little animal and put his blood on Joseph's, on Joseph's garment and tell the father a huge, huge lie. And so they all went to their father and they sobbing, oh, look what we found. Is this, isn't this your, your son's robe? And the father was very upset. Real phonies, this guy. Yeah, he was, they were, he was very upset. But meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar, a very, very important man. He was a captain of the guards in Egypt. But poor Joseph. He was sold as a slave, and his father was so upset. Oh, boy. Isn't that sad? Very it's sad. A sad story. Joseph had every single right to be angry at his brothers, and he had every right to have a very bad attitude. Yeah. Could you imagine? Would you give up? Would you have a bad attitude? Why, if I had brothers like that, I wouldn't need sisters. <laughs> Okay, so Joseph had a right to be angry and to have a bad attitude and to also to give up. You know, sometimes problems come our way and we just don't know how to face it and we just give up. But God doesn't want us to give up. There's more to this story. There's a lot more to the story. There's more. There's more. Oh. So let's turn to chapter 39. We're going to skip one whole chapter. Let's go to 39. And, and Manny's going to read us verses 1 through 6. Okay, 1 through 6. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officers, the captain of the guard, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph. And he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left everything in Joseph's care, everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. That's right. So you see, although his brothers did something terrible to him, and although... Joseph had such a bad, bad time. I mean, first they hated him. Then they threw him into a cistern. Then they took his robe and they lied about him. They sold him to the Midianites as a slave. Joseph was taken in chains. It wasn't like he was free to roam around. Bad news. No, it really was bad news. But God was working through and in Joseph's life. He was preparing him for a very important job. And as you read, 
he did give him a, sp a special job. And that was because Joseph didn't have a bad attitude. He didn't say, oh God, why did you do this to me? No, he never said anything. Joseph did not have a bad attitude despite his situation. He became very, very successful. And Potiphar got very rich and successful. That's right, all because of Joseph. Because of Joseph, because God blessed Joseph. And because he blessed him, Potiphar was blessed also. So Joseph did not get a bad attitude. Nope. He even was not mean to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't take it out on anybody else, even though his bro brothers were cool to him. But he didn't, he didn't let that get to him. So we learned some things from Joseph. Yep. One thing that we learned from Joseph is that the circumstances and problems we have with others cannot dictate and, and make us so angry that we can't see through this. Number two, our attitude and how we handle our situations very, very important. Mm -hmm. So if Manny hits me, I'm not gonna hit him back. Good night. <laughs> I'm gonna go tell his mommy. Let her take care of it. Okay. So the attitude is important. And God, we know God is with us and leading us everywhere we go. That's right. And he will bless us when we do good things. He will bless us. But we have that choice. We have a choice. Like Joseph had a choice. He could have been mad. He could have thrown a temper tantrum. He could have done all kinds of things, but he didn't. He didn't. He went on and he had a good attitude and God made him successful. And success happens when we have the right attitude. Okay? So... That was our lesson for today. I thought that was That's a right. good so, lesson. You, you know, we learned one more lesson. What, what lesson did you if learn? If you got brothers like Joseph, stay away from him. <laughs> He's funny. Okay, well, I think maybe we want to pray before um, I tell them what the craft is for today. Okay. Okay? So you want to pray for them? For the craft? No, for the children, that okay. the Lord will help them. Okay. Let's close our eyes. Well, dear Lord, we just thank you because we know you love us and you care for us. And Lord, I pray for all the children and even grown-ups that are listening today, Lord, yes. and pray that this lesson will be driven into their hearts and that they will understand that even in the worst situation, God is always working to bless you. Yes. It's all a matter of your attitude. So Lord, bless the children and the adults who are watching when they face uh, life's problems and situations and things seem to be going bad and just give them grace sufficient for each and every day. We commit them all unto you in Jesus' name. And dear Lord, bless the craft that's coming. Amen. 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 Okay, so for this week's craft, it's really something very easy. All you need is a piece of paper, a piece of paper, okay? And a marker or a pencil or a crayon. And on top of your paper, you're gonna write, my daily attitude. Oh, attitude. My daily attitude. So you're gonna you're gonna chart how you behave this week, what your attitude is. If you have on see, I have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so do I have a good attitude on Sunday? I'll draw a picture next to Sunday. It didn't last Sunday. Monday, so but if you if you have a fair attitude, look at my fair. See fair, he's not really happy, but he's not really sad either. And then this is the oh my goodness, I was bad. I don't feel I'm raunchy, okay? But raunchy, raunchy. But I hope to see more like this, more good attitudes. Hmm. So how are you going to do this? You're gonna make your chart like I did, okay? You're gonna make your chart. And every day, one, two, three. there's one, two, one, two, three. So okay. every day you have to choose which picture gets drawn next to the date. And for help, you can ask your parents because I think they kind of know how you feel. And then next week, when we come back together, 
and you show us your chart. Let's see how well you did this week. Okay, remember, God helped Joseph with his attitude and he will help you. Amen. So that if you feel like, oh, today, I don't feel so good. But you know what? Pray and say, Lord, help me have a better attitude. He will do it. He will do it. Amen. So I'm hoping to see all those charts next week. Okay? Have a blessed day. Bye. Sayonara. <laughs>